So today we're going to start on a new topic. <clears throat> so this topic is called marketing management. So it's a new concept uh, under leadership and management, whereby we look at the, the meaning of marketing, its meaning, also the importance of having marketing, importance, and some of the philosophies that we undertake when carrying out marketing. Now, marketing involves getting information out there about your, your goods or services that you offer. Marketing management, on the other hand, is how do you come up with the specific strategies to utilize to get that information out there. So in this topic, we're going to look at the different marketing strategies also and the concepts or theories that we undertake when coming up with those strategies. So to define what marketing is, so marketing is defined as the performance of business activities, the performance of business activities that direct the flow of goods and services that direct the flow of goods and services from the producer to the consumer of flow of goods and services from the producer to the consumer from the producer to the consumer so there are different ways through which you can undertake marketing of goods so you may use different strategies either according to the customers or the products themselves. We're going to look at those theories or what we call marketing orientation philosophies. Now, marketing management on the other hand, marketing management, marketing management is defined as taking into account these activities and how best we can get the information out there concerning the goods and services we provide. So this is where Marketing information is where at least one party, at least one party to a potential exchange. And by potential exchange, we mean the exchange of goods and services for a consideration or a price. For a potential exchange gives thought to the objectives or what is intended with this marketing gives thought to objectives and means and means of achieving desired responses desired responses from the other parties desired responses from the other parties the other parties so what this entails is you'll even carry out a marketing research and by marketing research it means you dive into the details of the consumers you try and figure out what are some of the needs that you need to satisfy now marketing management or uh, has certain importances and first of all we're going to discuss what are some of the importance of marketing as it is importance of marketing so any organization that undertakes marketing benefits from it in one way or another and what would you say are some of the importance of instituting marketing one is there will be increasing sales you'll sell more because you undertake this uh, kind of activities so you can say one it provides profit provides or increase provides profit and goodwill provides profit and goodwill to marketing enterprises and to marketing enterprises marketing enterprises so what this means is we will boost the amount of sales that we make and goodwill uh, as you have identified goodwill is that asset that is attributable when the difference between the purchase consideration and the net assets that 
you have. So that value of the reputation that you build will also be boosted by undertaking marketing activities or business activities. Also provides profit and goodwill uh, to marketing enterprises. So for this one, you can say it boosts its reputation, boosts reputation of the reputation of the organization. Of the organization. Also, it helps to satisfy human wants, satisfies human wants. So this is now, when you undertake marketing, you get to interact with your target market or your consumers. So what that means is that the product that you come up with will be more inclined to satisfying the human wants, the human wants also. And then also through marketing, uh, marketing widens, widens an organization's an organization's market share, market share, market share. So what this means is if you undertake marketing, you'll get into new markets that you can actually utilize or capitalize on the viable opportunities. Uh, one of the ways that we used to study in the previous unit known as the SGE. So in the case that you find out that you're in a market that is filled with rivalry, rivalry, there is this matrix that you can utilize that we know of as ego answer matrix. So what that meant is you come up with either a new product, new product, new product or an existing product, or you move to a new market, new market, new market, or in the same existing market, existing market, existing market. So this matrix helped you to identify different ways in which you can still stay in business. Now, when you move to a new market with a new product, uh, so that was called a uh, product market development or market market development market development for an existing product in a new market market development development and then also for a new product in a new market this one we called product development product development and also uh, diversification diversification also whereby we talked about the different kinds of diversification that we have either concentric or conglomerate and also market penetration market penetration so one of the strategies that a, a, a new or a company that is in an environment that is filled with rivalry is that it can use the marketing marketing strategies or marketing penetration strategies so what this means is one of all, one one thing you can offer promotions promotions also discounts 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 and even offers so we are saying that marketing widens an organization's market share market share and then also Marketing, you can say another point is that marketing creates also creates avenues of employment or creates employment. So what that means is through employment of the marketing sales team or the sales team, we get job opportunities also if you institute marketing activities and then uh, it facilitates economic growth, facilitates economic growth also. Facilitates economic growth. And also, marketing provides channels for communication. Marketing provides channels 
for communication for communication to marketing firms to marketing firms so what we mean in this case is that you will undertake marketing activities and from that you will be having feedback feedback from the customers feedback so it creates that channel of communication or passing of messages and then also uh, it facilitates price control facilitates price control facilitates price control through this marketing that will will now influence the demand and supply of that product so those are some of the importance of marketing also uh, marketing helps people consume goods that they would not also rather consume for instance things that we need for instance like insurance you need people to push those sales for such a, a product for such a product now the next concept that you are going to look at is on how then do we come up with the best strategies to utilize when marketing of our products so that one now is known as marketing management philosophies marketing management philosophies philosophies marketing management philosophies or uh, orientation or this orientation or orientation how do you bring the strategies to utilize in pushing the sales of your goods and services now one of the concepts that uh, we have here is in the case of for instance if you have a good that is the supply is low the supply of good x is actually low so you as an organization you will be more geared to produce that good whose supply is low now that kind of concept or uh, marketing management that will boost your organization because now we know organization f limited has a regular supply of good x so this kind of concept is what we call production concept whereby you rely on aspects of the market such as if the demand is more than the supply then one of the ways to increase the reputation or the success of this company is producing that good which is not available so that is production concept one of the theories so you have production concept production concept so for production concept so you can say uh, management management is concerned is concerned with production with production and efficiency especially especially when especially when the demand exceeds supply when demand exceeds supply supply so this is what you're saying that you will produce that good which is deemed to be rare in the market or demand so that you actually have more sales more sales on the same so it holds that favors it holds that it holds that customers or consumers it holds that consumers favor or prefer favor or prefer products which are widely products which are widely available widely available available 
also the organization may undertake another concept altogether or another philosophy altogether now in the second one this is where the organization may take into account the quality quality of the product quality of the product now for instance if you take uh, a company the, that produces high quality products one of the best selling companies that has this kind of high quality products will sell more than a company that is substandard with the products that it produces the products that it produces so this concept is known as the product concept whereby the organization focuses on improving the quality of the product product concept most most goods of ostentation so goods of ostentation this one you you, uh, you encountered in economics most goods of ostentation or goods of class bear this most funds that produce these goods bear this concept in mind that the more the high quality goods that they come up with the more they will be bought so you can say it holds that consumers holds that consumers will buy products of high quality will buy products of high quality and performance of high quality and performance and shun inferior products or avoid inferior products avoid shun or avoid inferior products so this now will mean that a company that produces high quality products then will be more likely to make more sales as compared to one with substandard uh, goods and then the other one is known as the selling concept selling concept selling concept so what this concept dictates is that for those kinds of goods that necessarily we will not buy on our own terms regardless of the market forces that we have an organization has to take an extra initiative to sell that product to us so the selling concept is such that for good such as uh, insurance we know we need it but an organization will be more likely to sell it to you as an individual because this uh, this uh, falls under an, a category that you know as unsought goods you do not necessarily go out looking for one but for an organization that wants to sell you a certain policy they undertake this kind of concept whereby they have to persuade you to buy such unsought goods or goods that will not necessarily be looked out for in the market that is what we call the selling concept so you can say it holds that it holds that even if consumers are to be left alone even if consumers are to be left alone they will not ordinarily buy enough of the products they will they will not ordinarily buy enough of the organization's products enough of the organization's products so what that means is that the organization has to take that initiative to persuade or sell it to them so that is uh, you can add this so the organization must undertake must undertake aggressive selling strategies aggressive selling and promotion and promotion efforts
So the, their main aim is to sell what they make. The policies that, for, so for instance, uh, I can say, e.g. unsought goods such as, or unsought goods such as insurance. They have to sell it to you or uh, persuade you. And then also marketing concept, marketing concept. Marketing concept. So for this kind of uh, philosophy or orientation, when you talk about philosophy, this is the management's attitude towards what kind of strategy they will implement. So for marketing concept, on the other hand, this is to make what the consumers want or after taking into account the wants, these human wants that the target market has, we try and formulate products that meet this kind of uh, wants. So uh, it holds that, for this one, holds that, organizations, organizations, success lies in, success lies in determining and fulfilling, determining and fulfilling the needs and wants of the target market, the needs and wants. of the target market so this is why most companies take seriously the concept of reviews that uh, their, their consumers bring to the table target markets and ones of the target markets is determining and fulfilling the needs and wants of the target markets so you can say it is more customer oriented it is more customer oriented. It is more customer oriented and aimed at and aimed at customer satisfaction, customer satisfaction, satisfaction customer satisfaction so this meaning of customer oriented this is whereby we take into account the customer's needs and wants and formulate a product that can satisfy or fulfill those needs fulfill those needs and then also we have the so so social or societal societal marketing concept marketing concept so for this one this is now, yes, you take into account the needs of the consumers, but also it should be in line with what the society dictates to be right. So that is what we're saying that even though you are taking into account the needs of these consumers, it should be not detrimental to the rest of the society. So it argues that, so for this one, it argues that It is only right, it is only right to satisfy, to satisfy the consumer, the consumer's need as long as, as long as in doing so, as long as in doing so, the individual or the marketer does not affect the society or the environment, does not affect the environment or society adversely.
environment or society adversely. So it argues that the needs of an individual should also be in conformity with what the society dictates to be right. So these are the marketing philosophies, marketing management philosophies that an organization may uh, utilize. One is the production, also the product, selling, marketing, and societal marketing concept. Societal marketing concept. Now, an organization may undertake these kinds of marketing management and also necessarily involve a certain kind of uh, concept that we deem to be the marketing mix, marketing mix. So when you're discussing what a marketing mix, this is a combination of four variables that an organization may utilize in ensuring that they boost the sales of this company and actually benefit in this concept of marketing. Now, the four uh, variables are also known as the four Ps. So, namely, we have the one is place, the other one, price, the other one, promotion, and the other one, price, place, promotion, and which other one? We have four of them, four Ps that we're going to look at. So, we are saying marketing mix is that concept of whereby you involve those four uh, individuals or variables to ensure that you come up with the best kind of uh, marketing strategy. So also the other one also is known as the product or what you're saying here, product. So a, a combination of this whereby the physical distribution of the goods, also the price should be affordable Promotion now goes back to the advertising of this product and the product itself should be of high quality or standards. So marketing mix, that is what you're going to look at. So you define what marketing mix is. So this is a mixture of, uh, a mixture. of controllable variables, controllable variables that the farm uses, that the farm uses to pursue the sort level, to pursue the sort out level of sales, pursue the sort level of sales, of sales in the target market, in the target market. So we have different strategies that applied to ensure that this combination of these variables are what you uh, bring out the best kind of sales. So you can say these variables include One, the price, also the product, also the promotion, and place, the place, the physical place or the ways in which they will be distributed. So uh, we start with the product. Now the product, this is what is offered to the target market product, number one. So it is that aspect of the marketing mix that is offered to the uh, customer. It is what is offered to the customers, to the customers. To satisfy to satisfy their needs to satisfy their needs and wants and wants so this is the goods that we come up with and we have different kinds of products that we may have it, they may be based on durability so for that one it can be durable or uh, non-durable 
also industrial and uh, consumer goods and another so in the case of product this product undergoes a life cycle that you're going to look at also and from that life cycle those are some of the decisions that you have to make in terms of how to market this product now for the life cycle of the product uh, you can have so the product life cycle from introduction till to decline life cycle so this is defined as the life of the product from the time that it was introduced to its maturity and even decline decline of that product product so these uh, are the stages are the stages are the stages that a product undergoes the product undergoes which include which include so you start with the introduction introduction this is where you bring the product to light that you introduce people to the product itself also the growth growth of the products now this is characterized by increase in sales of the product and then also the maturity and maturity and decline and decline decline of the products decline of the product so under introduction you have to think of a way to market this product and now what that involves is remember you are selling a new product to either an existing market or a new market so for that kind of a stage so for the introduction stage introduction stage introduction stage so for this one you can say it's characterized by slow growth and in sales it's characterized by slow growth in sales and profit in sales and profits and low profits or no profits and low profits the people are still not aware of the product that you're offering at the introduction stage so what happens in this case now you have to come up with strategies that will boost your awareness of the product or the market's awareness of the product and in that now this is involving promotional levels or the price that you introduce this product with so for the strategies so the strategies marketing strategies at the introduction stage marketing strategies at introduction stage may include one you may bring the product at a high price and also high promotional level what that means is yes you're offering the product at a high price but also the activities that you're taking uh, are high promotional activities for instance having ads everywhere or on all platforms so as to increase the sales despite your products being high now that kind of strategy is what we call a rapid skimming strategy where you introduce the product at a high price rapid skimming strategy So this is where you introduce the product at a high price and also high promotional levels also. So this you can say launching the product at a high price and high promotional level and high promotion level. So what this means is that you set a high price to try and recover the amount that you used in coming up with this product. Remember, you have, have to have done uh, research on the same. So there are costs that you're incurring. So this high price now will help you recoup that cost of production. And the high promotional level will create awareness of the product. 
also uh, number two can be slow skimming strategy slow skimming strategy where you introduce the good at a low price but now you institute high promotional levels so what this does it captures the market because of the low price and the high or extensive promotional levels so slow skimming so you can say this one is launching launching the product at a high price or at a high price Sorry, this is this should be high price and a slow promotional level slow promotional level so slow promotional level and then another strategy that you can use also is on the penetration strategies now this one you have the rapid penetration strategy So now this one is what, what I was telling you. You bring in the product at a low price and a high promotional basis. So low price and a high promotional level. And then also the, the slow promotional uh, penetration strategy. So you launch the product at a low price and low promotional levels. Low promotional levels. So for rapid penetration strategy, so for that one, you can say launching a product, launching a product at a low price and high promotional levels and high promotion level. And then also uh, for low penetration strategy. Or slow, so this is slow penetration strategy. So this is launching a product, launching a product at a low price, at a low price. and low promotion and pro low promotional levels mostly this kind of goods may be the inferior goods also and then the next stage is the growth stage the growth stage now this one is characterized by increased number of sales growth stage so you have the introduction stage then the growth stage so this one you can say is characterized by a rapid climb or a rapid growth rapid climb in sales So for because now you have created awareness on the same goods, so it's characterized by a rapid climb in sales because now individuals have identified that this product actually can satisfy their, their wants or needs. And then for this kind uh, of strategy, uh, the growth stage, so the marketer, you can say the marketer, Needs to engage, needs to engage the customers to improve, need to engage the customers to get information on how to improve, to get information on how to improve the quality of the products, the quality of the product of the product 
so as to increase sales, so as to increase sales. Also, you can say another strategy adopted is aggressive advertising, another strategy employed. is aggressive advertising so this involves now because your product is well known you can actually have more of the advertisements of that product so that you can increase the sales of the product and then also for the maturity stage maturity stage maturity stage so this is where these sales now have reached a certain level and they have stagnated so yes they are high sales but now necessarily there is no increase in sales so maturity stage so you can say is characterized by stagnation of sales stagnation of sales growth rate sales growth rate and sales having reached their peak having reached their peak so what that means is this is where the product has been sold and there is that constant sales that you are making every other year or period of time So for this kind of stage, uh, the strategies that you may use in terms of marketing, you may, so the marketer, you can say the marketer may employ product modification what that means is you try to improve your products so as to acquire the market that you have not acquired product modification also market modification market modification so this now may need, may mean that you get into other new markets market modification market modification in order to increase the sales growth rate sales growth rate sales growth rate so product modification this is increasing the quality of the product and market modification this is now identifying other target markets apart from the one that you're currently serving and then also uh, the last stage is known as the decline decline stage so this is where there's a decline in the sales of the product so is characterized by a decline in sales by a decline in sales in sales of the product which depends now on the market conditions also so you can say the strategies the strategies available at this stage are at this stage are one they may choose to start other products now that is diversifying at this stage are one So you can say uh, the diversification, diversification also. So this may mean they go into related areas of operation, which now is concentric also in unrelated areas, which is known as conglomerate. So this is related areas of operation. And this one is unrelated areas. So for concentric diversification, this is now you 
start offering other goods that are related to the same areas of production. For instance, if you are making uh, cakes, you decide to open up a restaurant. It is in the same related area of operation. For conglomerate, on the other hand, if you are making cakes, you decide to either open a, let's say, a car wash or something of that sort. Totally unrelated areas of operation. Because now these products of yours are no longer having sales. Also, another one, increasing the investment of the farm, increasing investments. in other products, in other products, to maintain that competitive position. So if you are offering other products, you increase investments in those other products, competitive position, to, ma to maintain competitive position. And then also another strategy is the decreasing, decreasing investment selectively, decreasing investment selectively. So this is where if you had opened different kinds of entities to support this product, you start closing them. So decreasing investment selectively in those areas that the product is not performing. And then also harvesting, harvesting. Now this concept of harvesting, this means you divest and by, by divesting means you try and recover the cash quickly. So this is trying to recoup the investments, to recoup the investments. And that entails now selling these products, the assets that come with these products. So that is uh, the product life cycle and also the strategies that are utilized in every kind of uh, stage. So the product life cycle, if plotted grammatic, uh, graphically, you'll have this kind of setting. So on this side, you can have time. So over the time of period that this product is in use or in sales, and then on this side, you can have the amount of sales, amount of sales. Now we said the in introduction bit also the maturity and decline. So for this one, you can say from here, introduction stage, and then the increase in sales, up to a certain point, this is known as the growth stage. And then the stagnation of the sales is known as the maturity. And also lastly, you have the decline, decline stage, decline stage. So that now is a graphical representation of how the product life cycle looks like. Now that is one of the concepts of the marketing mix. And then the next one also, so after the product, the next one that you're going to discuss is on the price, price, price decisions. Now this is the value attached to the products that you have created. This is the value that the producer or the seller attaches to the product and it is affected by different instances. So one of the factors that you have to count uh, come up with or consider when attributing a price of, an in, of a product is the costs, cost of production that you incurred. Also the markets or the market. So we are going to look at this now as a uh, marketing mix variable. So you can say the price, this one, is the valuation, is the value, valuation 
of the product to the valuation of the product by the seller. This is that aspect of attributing a value to the product that the seller has created. And we know that price is affected by different variables. So price is affected by, one is, what are some of the concepts? One is the costs also, another one, that's true. Also the demand, market demand also, market demand. Also in the case of the competitors, prices also competitors prices competitors prices this is where you find there is a price ceiling competitors prices also on uh, the government legislation government legislation whereby they can put a maximum price for which a good should be so sold and also in the case of economic factors such as inflation and uh, those other concepts. So you can say uh, for this one, you can say a price mix, price mix, price mix. Now, when you're saying a price mix, these are some, what are some of the policies that you can institute to ensure that you sell your goods at an affordable price. So a price mix includes, includes A, one, you can have, the pricing policies dictated by the company, pricing policies. Also, the discounts to be offered, discounts, discounts, discounts to be offered. Also, the terms of credit sale, terms of credit sale. What you mean by terms of credit sale is, in the case that you want to sell goods to an individual on credit, what are some of the issues that you need to consider? For instance, that person should be credit worthy or credit worthiness. Their credit score should be something that you can rely on. Otherwise they won't pay you back. And then also the terms of delivery and the pricing strategy, terms of delivery. And also the pricing strategies, pricing strategies. So we have different pricing strategies. I would like you to go also and look at this. We have a promotion pricing strategy whereby you launch a product and you sell at a, an amount that will attract the attention of the target market. And then later on, you will upgrade that price so that to recoup the period of time that you sold it at a low price. So that is promotion strategy also. So also the pricing strategy is a factor in the price mix, price mix. And then we look at the other kind of a marketing mix. So you can start with the promotion, promotion, promotion. Now this involves advertising and publicity of the good, so you can define what promotion is. So this is persuasive, is persuasive communication, persuasive communication about the product offered, about the product offered. So if you're asked, what are some of the con contexts that will influence how you come up with a price mix, these are what you can also list. 
And then, so is persuasive communication about the product offered is it by the manufacturer, by the manufacturer to the potential customer. By the manufacturer. How do you get individuals to buy your goods? To the potential customer. So the promotional mix, promotional mix includes one advertising, advertising, so uh, we know what advertising is, so this is whereby you present the product in a way that is enticing to the customers or the potential customers. Also, personal selling, personal selling, personal selling. So for personal selling, this is where you involve the salespeople to persuade the target market, personal selling. So involving, for this one you can say involving, sales people to communicate the product to communicate the product to the market so what this does is that it creates that personal or uh, interpersonal touch with the target market you know you are contact person in any case if you have any question regarding the product you can actually lie us with the sales people and then also the sales promotion and publicity so the sales promotion sales promotion sales promotion now what this means is how do you boost sales for instance how would you say sales are to be boosted in any case that you're offering a product one is huh? discounts yes so this one sales promotion involves giving discounts special discounts any other also in the case of a, a product that uh, you are giving free samples free samples Free samples also, free samples. And also temporary price reductions and point of sale this demonstrations. For instance, how to use the product that will increase the amount of sales that you have also. So among others, also temporary price reduction is another temporary price reduction. You say, like what uh, Jumia is doing, you have a Black Friday where you reduce the prices for a certain period of time and then you'll take back uh, to the point where the prices were. So temporary price reduction. And then also publicity. Publicity. So this is what is known about the product or the organization entirely the how the product of the organization is viewed with the society publicity so the more people talk about your product and your organization the more awareness they create for you in terms of promotion of your goods and services so these are some of the promotional mix that we have advertising personal selling sales uh, promotion and also publicity and also publicity. And then the remaining one is on the place, place, place. Now for place, so this is the physical distribution, uh, the delivery of goods. So this one, it entails how to get the goods to the market. So you can say, uh, place so 
so this is physical distribution physical distribution of the goods of the goods to the customers the customers to the customers at the right time the right time and place and place so this now involves how you select distribution channels how do you get your products out there so you can say it involves it involves a choice of distribution channels a choice of distribution channels on how to get the goods to the customers to get the goods to the customers the consumers so there are certain factors that you may have when choosing a distribution channel one is the cost the cost that you'll have to incur when you uh, using a certain channel also the characteristics of the customer and the product itself if it is highly perishable then you'll need to use a faster means of distribution and then also the case of if you have to engage the middlemen the middlemen so the uh, you can say the place mix involves place mix includes includes one the type of intermediaries or middlemen available for distribution type of intermediaries available for distribution also number two you can say the channels available the distribution marketing channels available distribution marketing channels available available for distribution for distribution now this one or for taking the goods to the for taking the goods to the consumers i've told you there are certain factors you will consider when choosing a distribution channel the consumer so what you need to understand is what are these uh, four P's of marketing that you're saying. One is the place. Also, number two is the price. Number three is promotion. And lastly, the product itself. The product itself. Now, remember, one of the concepts of marketing management, we said, is gathering information regarding the target customers or the consumers themselves. Now, when we are talking about marketing information or uh, how to gather such information, we will need to look at what then are some of the ways we can have that. One is to, you can conduct surveys or marketing research whereby you engage with the target consumers to know the best products that you will come up with now that brings us next to the next concept of how then do you develop marketing information and for this one you will also need to incorporate a marketing information system so you can say developing a marketing developing marketing information sorry developing marketing information
marketing information so what we are saying that this marketing information is defined as that collection of data that will influence the kind of marketing strategies that you'll come up with so for this one you can define specifically we will we are going to look at the market information system marketing information system how do you process information that you've gathered from the market we have said one of the ways you can have this information is carrying out reviews whereby you have a section in your website where people can come up with the reviews that they have identified with regards to the product also surveys you conduct surveys and research on the same so you can define a marketing information system so this is a continuous process continuous process continuous process of data collection of data collection while carrying out market research while carrying out market market research marketing research marketing research So we are saying that this marketing information system is designed to guide uh, making marketing decision making in an organization. Why this marketing information is very key is, for instance, a good company that made good use of this kind of uh, marketing information is this sports company. So they identified. So I was saying marketing information guides a company towards achieving more sales. Now, a good example of how a company that did that is this sports company, this uh, company that makes shoes for athletes. So what they did is they carried out a, a research on the same and they identified that most of their shoes actually are, are worn by those individuals. So in so doing, they decided to actually sponsor these athletes. But this had a ripple effect to, towards them that their publicity actually increased. So that is why marketing information is very key in terms of uh, ensuring success of a company in terms of the sales that it makes. So a marketing, uh, we're saying marketing information system is a continuous process of data collection while carrying out marketing research, marketing research. So marketing research is now identifying the problems that we have in terms of the strategies that we're using and how to best solve them. So we have different kinds of uh, steps involved in 
marketing information or collection of this marketing information. So you can say uh, collecting, collecting and uh, collecting, analyzing and using this information or disseminating, disseminating information relies on these steps relies on the following steps on the following steps or process on the following process so one is you determine 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 the basis for which you will source for this marketing information. So determine what metrics to include, what metrics to include in a marketing information system, in a marketing information system, in a marketing information system. So what you're saying, what are some of the bases that you are going to utilize when carrying out this marketing information research? So the metrics that we decide here may be based on what you're trying to identify, be it the sales or the uh, return on investments that we can actually have from this kind of target markets. Also, number two, you go ahead and gather relevant data, gather relevant data, gather relevant data, And by relevant data, what, what you mean by relevant data? This is data that actually meets these metrics that you are going to uh, capture them against. So this gathering of relevant data may be from both internal, internal sources. Now this is from internal sources. This may be the database that we have on our customers from internal sources such as sales, such as sales, also sales records and such, just to see what is that product that is selling more than the other. Also, it can be from our external sources, external sources. Now this one is from the competitor results, competitor results. or just an evaluation of where the company is, competitors' results, so as to see where your position is at. And then your company is at in terms of the uh, market that you're serving. And then also you can analyze this data. So analyze data, analyze the data. Now this one involves plotting up graphical representation plotting a graphical representation of the data what this does is it brings out a clear picture of this kind of uh, setting that we have plotting a graphical representation of the data just to facilitate an understanding of what you have collected here and then also you communicate the findings communicate the results or the findings that this trend analysis is that the pro product that we have is being sold much in the first quarter. So this is just an example, arbitrary example that you're saying from an analysis of the marketing information, you know that product A is mostly sold in the first quarter of the year. So that is now communicating the results. So from you communicating such results, then the management makes marketing decisions. So this is making marketing decisions. Make, make marketing decisions. That we know since product A is sold mostly during the first quarter of the year, that is when we intensify our promotion levels, that you're going to uh, put more emphasis on that product. 
during that period of time. So that now is on the concept of uh, marketing information. So uh, we are saying that this marketing information lays the basis of foundation of the strategies that you're going to use. Now, the next point that you're going to look at is then what are some of these strategies that we actually employ when marketing our goods? So that is marketing strategies. So marketing strategies. marketing strategies so this is defined as a process that can allow an organization to concentrate its effort on that aspect that will increase the most sales so you can say is a process that can allow or that can allow an organization to concentrate on its concentrate its limited resources its limited resources on the greatest opportunities to increase the sales on the greatest opportunities to increase sales to increase sales and achieve a sustainable and achieve a sustainable competitive advantage sustainable advantage and we define competitive advantage as what? What is competitive advantage? What is competitive advantage? This is that aspect of the business or that strength of the business that gives it an edge over the competitors of the competitors. So such a strategy may actually be uh, a competitive advantage in the in the company so what then are some of the importance of, of having marketing strategies importance of marketing strategies importance of marketing strategies One, what are some of the importance of marketing strategies? You have just said here that it helps in creating a competitive advantage also. So creates a competitive advantage, creates a competitive advantage. So it gives you an edge over your competitors in the kind of strategy that you, you are using. For instance, if you differentiate your products either according to cost, or the uh, the qualities that it has then that kind of strategy may give you an edge also uh, it facilitates it facilitates conducting of conducting of market research market research so if you employ a marketing strategy that in conducting of market research, if you employ a, a marketing strategy that you're seeing, for instance, if you say we are going to offer, uh, to offer free samples and people are not open to this kind of a strategy, then it, it follows that that kind of strategy might not be actually effective in making sales. And then also, 
it enables the company enables the company enables the company to examine to examine the response of the strategy the response of the strategy of the strategy in terms of identifying the market positioning that is identifying the market positioning where they lie in the market market positioning what goods are more are being cons consumed more than others i.e identifying the market positioning of the company of the company so this may entail carrying out those surveys that you are saying also to examine the response to examine the response of the strategy and then also it enhances it enhances sustainability of a business sustainability of a business for instance under the uh, product kind of life cycle we have looked at the maturity stage one of the ways that you can avoid the product going into the decline stage is adopting more or aggressive selling and promotion strategies such a strategy or a marketing strategy may enhance the sustainability of a business you can stay in business for longer just because of uh, adopting certain marketing strategies so necessarily these marketing strategies they are geared towards a certain market or a certain group of individuals now what that group of individuals is known as is what we call the target market the people that you're offering services to so when coming up with marketing strategies one key factor that you have to factor uh, to put into account is what necessarily is the target market or the target marketing strategies now what this means is who are you serving with your products be it the based on the quality or the uses of the product so for instance the goods of class that i was telling you for ostentation you may want to differentiate it so differentiated strategy this is where you custom make the goods according to the specifications of the individuals so we are going to look at now how then do you market your goods to a specific target to a specific target market so for this one you can start by defining what a target market is now the target market uh, let me repeat so this is the market that you're serving in the industry target market so it refers to refers to a group of people to a group of people or organizations or organizations selected by a firm selected by a firm which directs which directs the marketing program which directs marketing program which directs a marketing program to the group so if you're offering a new product then there's that target market that you you are looking to meet so the target or the strategy that you use now will be based on that target market you may use you may choose a single market segment or the different kind of uh, target market so by segmentation we mean you divide them according to certain characteristics be it age be it their preferences or be it uh, what they deem fit of their products so for target market segmentation that is now dividing this market according to some 
laid down characteristics it may be according to the kinds of income they earn so that you know if i'm going to sell a good uh worth this amount of money for 50 in one area then in another place for the same good i can also say sell, sell it at 200 based on the income levels of these individuals now that is target market segmentation where you divide them according to uh opportunities and their characteristics so you can say for this one target market segmentation or approaches to this target market segmentation so one of the of the approaches to segmentation may be based on uh, the market customization strategy market customization strategy so for this kind of a uh, strategy whereby you have segmented your target market take for instance you want to be made a a good such as a, a suit tailor made suit but now you have specifications of the same kind of suit so market customization this is where you treat each customer differently that every customer is unique in their own way their preferences their tastes are different so you have to take into account those kinds of uh, aspects so this one you can say it's usually common it's usually common for tailor-made goods for tailor-made goods the ones that are made to specifications to tailor-made goods so for example uh clothes or uh, you can say suits those kinds of tailor-made qualifications also any product that you can make modifications on the same that each customer is unique each customer is unique and then also differentiated marketing strategy differentiated marketing strategy so for this kind of strategy this involves making products that fit or serve a specific segment now this concept of differentiated market strategy so it is what i was telling you the other day that uh the individual that we discussed michael porter michael porter also came up with generic strategies michael porter generic strategies so for this kind of strategies, he identified that you can boost your uh, kind of productivity or sales in these different ways. One, he said, cost leadership, cost leadership, whereby you offer a good at a low cost, uh, at a low price based on your low cost of production. And then also differentiation, differentiation, now, differentiation, on the other hand, this is how you brand or package your goods. So, for instance, the packaging and the branding also affects that, that individuals may be sold products based on the uh, specification. And then these two now on a specific target market. So, uh, cost focus, cost focus, and then differentiation focus, differentiation focus. Now, for cost focus, now this is using prices based on a target market. That now, employing cost leadership on a target market. The same case 
applies to differentiation that uh, differentiation focus whereby you employ those kinds of difference in branding and packaging on a target market on a target market so also we uh, went through michael porter's value chain model where we said we have two types of activities one is the primary and secondary activities and under the primary activities which one did he discuss one is michael porter's value chain model So we had the inbound logistics, outbound logistics, operation, and also marketing and sales and service. So that is a differentiated marketing strategy also. So it involves making products, involves making products fit to serve a specific market it serve a specific segment and then also concentrated market strategy concentrated market strategy marketing strategy market strategy So, so this is through through different branding or packaging through different branding or packaging or packaging that is differentiated strategy and then also concentrated market strategy now this is where they serve a single market segment serving a single market segment by so this is where marketing strategies, marketers, marketers endeavor to serve a single market a single market segment. So the, the market segment that you're saying may be based on the age group or the characteristics, concentrated market. So this is employing this kind of strategy on a single market segment, be it the basing them on the characteristics of the age. And you're saying the methods of segmentation include methods of segmentation include or how you come up with a single segment include based on so include age also the income levels age income also also the uh, groups that the marketing agencies or the marketing concepts so grouping also grouping so now this may be based on characteristic grouping uh, based on characteristics be it nationalities or those people who like a certain product methods of segmentation that you're saying So, and then we are saying that to get this marketing information, you have to conduct marketing research. So, marketing research. And for marketing research, this goes hand in hand with creating marketing intelligence, marketing research, marketing research.
So for marketing research, this one you can say it involves it involves gathering and analyzing gathering and analyzing data to make informed marketing decisions marketing decisions so this can be done through conducting surveys or having those aspects where you engage the customers or the consumers so you can say it helps in improving it helps in improving management decisions management decisions management decisions by providing relevant by providing relevant and accurate information by providing relevant and accurate information so this now you understand the demographic that you're serving marketing research so i've told you this one goes hand in hand with marketing intelligence so from this data that you have analyzed or you have collected then you can actually understand what is happening in the market or, or what are some of the changes that may occur in the market so the that is on marketing intelligence also marketing intelligence so this is is providing a company with a view providing a company with a view of what is happening in the market with a view of the market to understand what is happening understand what is happening in the market so for instance if you are a company that makes phones you can understand that now the when we shifted to smartphones one of the marketing intelligence that probably the companies at the time would have seen is that people now are more inclined to getting those smartphones rather than the other phones that we had so that kind of understanding what is happening in the market or the shifts in the market is what you're calling having marketing intelligence understanding what the market wants and it can be based on external data or internal data it can be based on external data so this is what the market is telling you external data so for instance the reviews that have been published with regards to the pro products or the published information to understand what the market entails so it can be based on external uh, data for example for example the published information published information is you you learn that people are more receptive to certain kinds of products nowadays also what the competitors future plan may be uh, all about and then also it can be based on it can also be based on internal data so this is what you have gathered from your data internal data so this now for instance the websites customer database website and doing an analysis of the same website database also website 
website analytics and search. So the difference between this marketing intelligence and marketing research is such that for marketing intelligence, it integrates all aspects of the uh, company. While for marketing research, what it does, it focuses on the customers rather than every other aspect. So you can have on one side, so the differences, differences between these two differences. Between marketing management, marketing intelligence and marketing research, marketing intelligence and research. So on one hand, you can have the marketing intelligence, the other also the marketing research marketing research so for this one marketing intelligence you're saying it involves all aspects so integrates with all aspects of the company of the company then for marketing research now this one is mostly focused on customers is focused on customers through conducting those surveys it's focused on customers so the data that we get here is what now creates marketing intelligence or that viewpoint that you're saying and then for marketing research on the other hand So this one has answers specific uh, questions. For instance, we said if when conducting or developing marketing information, you have to carry out a marketing research. So there is a basis for which you form the metrics for what you're looking for. So from that basis is what you're saying that it answers specific questions. So it answers specific questions. specific questions while for marketing intelligence on the other hand it is an ongoing process which now is continuous in nature that is it is continuous in nature so it's it's more of an interactive process it's an interactive process interactive process And then also, for marketing intelligence, uh, it requires skills such as, requires skills such as business analytical skills, business analytical skills, analytical skills, so what that means is, remember, we're trying to establish different patterns or what is happening in the market. So you have to have that concept of analysis as a skill in formulating what you're saying as marketing, marketing intelligence or market intelligence, or marketing intelligence or market intelligence. Also, uh, for this one, marketing research, on the other hand, so this one requires requires knowledge in a more mathematical background in a more mathematical background or a more mathematical setting so remember we are going to analyze this data based on a graphical representation. In most of this research that we conduct or marketing research can either be quantitative or quantitative or qualitative. 
Now the skills that you apply here, qualitative. So this quantitative uh, research now is what requires knowledge in a mathematical background or setting background. background. So that is marketing intelligence or market intelligence, creating that aspect of understanding what is happening in the market. So this one gives you also an edge over your competitors that you can anticipate the necessary strategies. So the remaining part now is on the international marketing and e-commerce, international marketing and e-commerce and e-commerce. So we all know what e-commerce is. E-commerce is doing business on the internet and international marketing is selling of goods in another market, uh, in another country, more so in a different country than what uh, you are selling, than the countries that the company is operating in. Now, the concept of international marketing and e-commerce has an impact in marketing and management because now there are some of the advantages that occur for selling goods uh, outside the country that you are in. So what are some of the advantages of selling goods overseas? One is, uh -huh. yes, why don't, one is, you serve a larger market also, increase profitability you will sell more in the case of uh, larger markets and then the concept of diversification that you're saying you actually get to diversify and also uh, reduce the impact of market being saturated by rivals and also you increase the brand reputation and recognition recognition so those are some of the advantages of selling goods overseas selling goods overseas so you can say advantages of international marketing advantages of international marketing so one is you can actually increase profitability also profitability also it enhances diversification enhances diversification whereby you have other markets that you're serving enhances diversification and spreading of risks also increasing brand reputation or recognition in brand recognition and recognition, increase in brand recognition and exposure. And then also to reduce the impact of market being saturated by rivals, to reduce impact of market saturation, market saturation. Market saturation. So you can write these questions uh, there, write these questions very fast. Identify five environmental factors, identify five environmental factors. Identify five environmental factors. that affect a business that affect a business 
and explain the way that affect a business and explain the way and explain the way in which each factor influences the marketing mix and explain the way influences the marketing needs. What factors should, what factors should a marketing manager, what factors should a marketing manager What factors should a manager, a marketing manager, consider when setting a price? When setting a price of a product, when setting a price of a product. So you can start with those ones. So that marks the end of uh, marketing management. So that is all you need to know in that uh, topic of marketing management.